Welcome to The Rock Church and World Outreach Center. We pray that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now, here's a message from Pastor Dan Roth. Hey, tonight, who, who wants a miracle? Amen. Stand to your feet. I'm going to get down on my knees and let's invite the miracle maker, the miracle worker, to come and to do something in this place tonight. Father, humbly we come to you. Lord, we can't do anything of ourselves, God. It's not by our power. It's not by our goodness, God. Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord. And so, God, tonight we come seeking you. Lord, we know that uh, many times we look to men, we look to the government, we look to our own resources, God, to get the job done. Tonight, Lord, uh, we correct that. We fix our eyes and our gaze on you. Lord, you're the hope of all the world. God, you are the all-sufficient one. You are our provider. You are the miracle worker, God. You are a supernatural God. You are not bound by our laws. You're not bound by time. You're not bound by our strength or our limited resources, God, or our limited knowledge, God. You far supersede all that. And so tonight, God, come and move in your church. Do a great, mighty, wonderful work, God. As we open up the word of God tonight, we pray that you open it up to us. Open our eyes to see and our ears to hear, our hearts to have a good understanding. May we be the good ground where the word is sown and may it produce something in each and every one of our individual lives. Holy Spirit, welcome in this place. Be our teacher, be our guide. Give us the vision, the wisdom, the instruction, even the direction, the correction that we need for our lives. And as well, God, I would ask that you would do miracles in this place tonight, God. Heal the sick, comfort those that are discomforted, God. Provide in a mighty way, Lord. Give words of wisdom and words of knowledge, God. Do your wonderful work in this place, God. Mend the broken, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you just come and you do the supernatural, wonderful work of God in this place. Lord, we don't just ask this blessing on ourselves. God, also, we would ask it for all the churches that are having a church service tonight, here in the Inland Empire as well as around the planet, God. We bless them, Lord, as you bless us. In Jesus' mighty name, we're all in agreement. We say, amen. amen. Grab a seat, get your Bibles out, and go with me to Mark chapter 5. We're not going to be in Mark chapter 5 for a long time. I just want to kind of open this up and talk about a couple of things. The title of tonight's message, if you're wanting to write something down, is Miracles. Miracles literally are happening all around us all the time. And many times we see things and we see what's going on, we see the hand of God, and either we take it for granted or, or we don't recognize it, realize it. Sometimes uh, uh, we may write it off, oh, that's just a coincidence, or, or that was just something you know, special, but that wasn't really, could it have been, could it, could it really be? But I, I personally believe that there's a whole lot more power to our prayers, and there's a whole lot more strength in the church than we realize. It's easy to get down on the church, easy to say that we're not doing our job, easy to look around and get discouraged and disheartened when you look at the news media and you say, oh my goodness, look at what's going on in the Middle East and look what's happening in Africa and what's going on with the ozone layer and the weather systems and all that kind of stuff. Very easy to get discouraged. And yet, I believe that there is a power that is resident inside the church that's greater than we understand and greater than we're operating in currently. And I believe that our prayers have much more impact than we know. Uh, there was a time when we were in Bible college, and it was the last night we were going to be staying there, and we were about ready to, to travel home, and we had all our stuff packed up, and we kind of had like a last hurrah with the, the friends and the people uh, that were going to Bible college, some of our coworkers, and, and we all congregated over at Pastor Luke's house. He had the, the biggest house because they had rented a duplex, and so that we wouldn't have fit in our apartment at the time. So we're all over there. We're hanging out, having our last hurrah, and wouldn't you know it, uh, we were in the Midwest, and, and all of a sudden, the air sirens go off, you know, the, the tornado warning, you know, and we're all kind of sitting there looking at each other. And all the people from California are like, what's that? <laughs> and uh, so we flipped on the news and sure enough, the report was coming that, uh, you know, um, you know, this tornado headed towards where we were and we're, we're going, okay, uh, what do we do? You know, and they're, oh, it should be fine. You know, usually it's, it, it's just, you know, not a big deal. You can kind of, they can kind of track and see where it's going. And so we're watching the news. As we're watching the news, it says it's going to converge on this street and this major street, you know, right here. It's going to come through right there. And we said, well, wait a second. Your house is right there on that corner. Wait, it's coming for us. And, and so, you know, all the Christians, we grabbed hands and, and, and even grabbed the non-Christians' hands from work that were there with us. And we grabbed their hands and we started to pray down heaven. We started to believe God. We asked God for supernatural protection over us, that, that uh, there wouldn't be any damage, that, that nothing would happen. As we're praying, 
I'm listening to the news report on the television behind me say, oh, well, that's weird. It looks like the tornado got caught in the river. It's going to go down around the city, not even touch anything in the city. Come on. See, the supernatural happens all around us, and our prayers have more power than we understand. I'm here to encourage you tonight, here to get you in faith tonight, because it's only by faith that you're going to receive a miracle from God. If you're in doubt, fear, and unbelief, don't expect anything. But the moment you cross over, the moment you start to believe God, the moment you start to ask God, and faith rises in your heart, now God says, I've got something to work with. I can move on that. Psalm chapter 40, verse 5 says, Many... Oh, Lord, my God. Everybody say many. many. Are your wonderful works. You know what that word wonderful works really is referring to? The miraculous. Many are your wonderful works which you have done. And your thoughts towards us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. <laughs> See, God is a supernatural God who desires to do supernatural things in our everyday lives. God wants to be intimately involved in all of our lives together. That, that, that's just from the creation you can see that God is speaking light and light was. God speaks the planets. God speaks the, the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom. But when it came time for man, what did God do? God knelt down and he started to trace in the dirt. And he started to, to make the man. And what did he do? He breathed the breath of God into his nostrils. When he formed the woman, what did he do? He pulled from the man's side and he formed the woman. See, God wants to be intimately involved in what's going on in our lives. God, God is looking throughout the earth. God is, is, is watching for faith. God is wanting to move on our behalf. And there is an enemy out there. There are world systems out there that are coming against us all the time. But our God is a supernatural, miracle-working, powerful God who will intercede and who will do great and mighty and wonderful things. <laughs> Psalm 72, verse 18 says, Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only does wondrous things. That word wondrous things there is the miraculous. God only does Wondrous things, only does mighty deeds. All God does. That's, that's all day, every day, God. Wondrous deeds. Just got a, a little testimony in my box from this church. And, and, and in case you didn't know it, you're sitting next to a miracle right now. This, this church is a church of the exes. All of us in this church probably should have been dead. Anybody could say, I should have been dead. Anybody can say that? Look at this. Look at this. You didn't even realize you were a walking miracle in this place tonight. Didn't realize you sat down next to a miracle tonight. I can safely say I should have been dead. Okay? There were things that happened throughout my lifetime that I, I now looking back, you know, hindsight is 2020. And you can look back and you can say, man, God was all over that situation. Even though that guy pulled a gun, I, nothing happened. Even though, uh, you know, my car was swerving onto the other side of the road, I closed my eyes and I said, Jesus. And, and, and somehow I, I came out on the other side without a scratch. Cars didn't touch. Nothing happened. See, we can say that God is a miracle working God, but I got this testimony in my box, and as I was reading over it, you know, at first I glanced at it, it was long. And, and you know, I was just, oh man, I gotta read my message, I gotta get into the Word tonight, I gotta figure out where we're going, what we're doing, and it was almost as if God said, settle down, son, I want you to take a, a read here, I want you to, to spend some time with this. And so I kind of skimmed it, God said, no, go back and look at it again. And as I went back and looked at it again, I started to realize, oh my God. This person is a miracle. They, they were so despondent over their life. A series of events, unfortunate things, uh, tragic things, things that should never happen to children. All this stuff led to uh, somebody walking out on them. They were so in despair that they decided they were going to end it all, swallowed down a bunch of pills, took a drink of a beer, and slit their wrist and, and thought that they were going to just fall asleep. Woke up in the hospital. And, and, and didn't realize what was going on. Seven days later, they get out. Life didn't change after that. But they had heard that somebody had come, that there would have been a police person that had come, and that policeman that, that had came on the scene brought someone on a ride-along, and that was the first call of the night. And so they were able to get them on an ambulance, they were able to get uh, them to the hospital, and so there they were, and so they get out, and, and they just keep living their life until Easter rolls around. 
And they knew that they had to do something. And so they came here to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center on Easter. And from the moment they stepped in the building, their eyes were filled with tears. Tears just streaming down their face. Pastor Jim gives the altar call. Their hands shoot straight up. They come down to the altar and they go back. Hold on. That's not even the best part of the story. I mean, that's exciting. But it's so cool what God was doing. And they get back into the room. And as they sit down in the room, their SPT comes and sits down with them and says, Do you remember me? She looks at her and says, no, I, I don't remember you. She says, I was on a ride-along one night, and the first call of the night, we came to your house. I haven't been able to get you out of my mind since then, and I've been praying for you ever since then. I'm going to be your SPT. Are you kidding me? Later on, she goes to Breaking Free, and there's the policeman in Breaking Free, and, and now they're all reunited together, and they're all having a good time, all getting healed, all getting restored. See, God is doing the miraculous all around us all the time. That's the God we serve. In fact, miracles are God's calling card. Did you know that? When Jesus showed up on the scene, and, and, and here's John the Baptist. John the Baptist knew who he was. Right? John the Baptist had, had, had spoken, that's the one. That is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But then there came a time where, where John started to despair of life and he was locked away in a prison and he was wondering, did he really spend all his effort on the wrong thing? And so he sends messengers to Jesus and he says, are you really the one or should we wait for someone else? And you know what Jesus sent back to him? He says, boys, send back to John my calling card. Tell him that the lame are walking, that the blind can see, that miracles, signs, and wonders are being done. See, that is God's calling car. Psalm 75 verse 1 says, we give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your wondrous works declare that your name is near. Isn't that awesome? Your wondrous works, your miracles, your wonders declare something. It's your calling card that your name is near. See, we've been given that name which is above every name. At that name, every knee shall bow. And at that name, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. At that name, demons flee. At that name, sickness and oppression ceases. At that name, that name that God has given us, no other name given on heaven or on earth by which we must be saved except the name of Jesus. And at that name, there's miracle working power that comes. Acts chapter 2 verse 22 the apostle is preaching the first sermon on the day of Pentecost. He says, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by what? Miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. See, God approved Jesus' life. God said, this is the one. He put his stamp on him. How? Miracles. The fact that he showed up. He said, what? Believe the works at least. If you don't believe it, at least believe the works. Look around you. This is God's calling card. Only God can do what I'm doing. See, doubt will kill miracles. Doubt will kill miracles. Matthew chapter 13, verse number 58, Jesus goes to his own country. They look at him and they go, wait a second, this is Jesus. This is that little boy that grew up in the carpenter's house. We know him. We know his family. They're all still here with us. Where's he been? What's he doing? And they, they doubted him. Matthew chapter 13, verse 58 says, Now he did not do many mighty works there because of their what? Unbelief. Didn't believe in him. Didn't believe he could do it. They doubted him. And, and they, they, he couldn't do many mighty works there. Couldn't do many miracles there. Because they had unbelief. So if doubt will kill miracles, that means that faith is the breeding ground for miracles. Are you listening? That's why I said what I said about faith earlier. That it's by faith that we receive. It's by faith that we can work a miracle. It's by faith that we can receive the miracle. It's by faith that God now moves on the earth. See, if doubt stops it, faith is the green light. Okay, let's go. Let me show this to you in Jeremiah Chapter 32, verse 27, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? See, if you start to doubt God's ability, well, he did it then, does he want to do it now? Well, is there anything too hard for God? Just ask yourself that question. God may be providing for them over there, but does God want to provide for me? Well, that's not the question. 
Is there anything too hard for God? Well, I, I've, I've, I know that God can heal, but does he, does he really want to heal? Is there anything too hard for God? See, the answer to that is an is a easy and quick no. No, nothing's too hard for God. It's not too hard for God. God listen, God is willing. God is ready. God is able. And there is nothing too hard for God. Now, if you're wondering when I was going to get to Mark chapter 5, we're going to get to Mark chapter 5 right now. A man by the name of Jairus. He's the ruler of a synagogue. He's the leader. Comes to Jesus. Says, Jesus, my daughter is sick. Can you come and heal her? Jesus says, I'll go with you. As they're going on the way, something happens. There's a crowd pressing Jesus. People are all around him. People are trying to get his attention. Things are happening. Jesus is just trying to move on so he can go heal this sick little girl. As he's going, all of a sudden, he says, whoa, 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 wait a second. Stop, everyone, stop. Power just went out from me. Somebody touched me. The disciples are going, are you kidding, Jesus? You know, look at all these people thronging you. I mean, they're, they're all over you, Jesus. You're saying someone touched Of course someone touched I'm touching you. I'm just standing here, you know. How can you say? He says, no, no, something happened. And there was a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years, came up behind Jesus, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. What? Faith. She believed that something would happen if she could just touch the hem. And so here she is, she touches the hem, and she can feel in herself that she is healed. Suffered for years at the hands of many doctors. They couldn't do anything for her. And so here she is, she touches the hem of his garment. Now she's completely and totally healed. She got her miracle, and she was just going to quietly move on and not bug Jesus. But what happens? Jesus says, stop! Someone touched me. I can almost picture the woman like... The Bible says she fell down before him and declared to him all that had happened. Lord, I, I've suffered. Lord, you healed me. Lord, you're miraculous. Lord, you're amazing. You are the Messiah. I mean, just declared to him everything, told him the whole story. Now, while this is going on, somebody comes up to Jairus from his household and says, hey, don't bother the master. In fact, let's read it. Mark chapter 5, verse number 35. While he was still speaking. So l listen, if you're Jairus, you're going, this is all wonderful. This is great. I I'm excited about the miracle that happened for this woman. That's building faith for my daughter because I know he's going to come heal her. But can we move this along? While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? In other words, they only had faith for Jesus to heal her while she was sick and still alive. They didn't have faith for Jesus to raise her from the dead and heal her. But let me ask you a question, church. When something ends, when something dies, is anything too hard for God? No. no. So what is Jesus' response? Remember, Doubt kills the miracles, but faith is the breeding ground for miracles. Look at what Jesus responds. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken. Now remember, Jesus was speaking, but while he's speaking, he's listening. And he hears a conversation. So as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. Don't be afraid, only believe. Just get in faith. Now, the story goes on that Jesus goes down to the ruler of the synagogue's house. All the people are wailing. He puts them all on. He says, you all gots to go, right? He just, just shuffles them out, right? He goes in. He brings three faith-filled friends with him, right? And the little girl's parents, because they are believing for their daughter to be raised up and to be healed. So he has an atmosphere of faith now. And he gets down and he says, little girl, I say to you, arise. And she gets up and she's hungry and he says, feed the little girl. Man, go for it. Feed your miracle right now. Keep encouraging it. Keep cultivating it. Keep going with it. Raise that little girl up because she is a miracle. What does this mean to us tonight? Tonight, some of you have doubted God. You need a miracle. 
And you know exactly when I say you need a miracle, what that miracle is. Because you've been believing God, you have asked, you have prayed, you have waited. But time, discouragement, closed doors, that situation died. People came to you and said, why trouble the master any longer? It's over. The season is past. The time is over. It's just not, it's not going to happen. Some of you have had terrible things spoken over you by friends and family members, people that you trusted. Some of you guys, maybe like the woman with the issue of blood, you, you've been for years at the doctor's office and, and, and you've been going after it and you've been, been trying to figure it out and saying, God, I'm believing you for the supernatural, but I don't want to be stupid in the natural and not do anything. So you've been going and you've been doing and, and you've been getting bad report after bad report after bad report after bad report. I'm here to tell you tonight, is anything too hard for your God? Come on, somebody. Is anything too hard for your God? Is anything too hard for your God? Then if not, then let's believe God tonight for miracles. Where's my team? Where's my team? Come on up, team. All right, they stayed close. Praise the Lord. And I want you just to get ready to receive. I believe that faith is high, and I believe that God is going to do some miracles tonight. So we're going to sing. We're going to believe God. We're going to allow the Spirit of God to come and move, and we're going to start to believe God in some areas, start to believe God for some miracles. Come on, guys. Let's just worship the Lord for a moment. Place your heart on the Lord. You want to stand in the presence of God. Let's get ready to receive. Get yourself in a position. Get your heart ready to believe God for a miracle tonight. Let's worship the Lord. this one because I believe that sometimes we blow this one up it's so big and yet is anything too hard for our God finances is such a small thing God is the one who owns the cattle on a thousand hills one who created the heavens and the earth he he lines heaven's streets makes them out of gold that's his asphalt that's the stuff they walk on that's that's under their feet and yet on earth, people prize it so much and build it up to be such a big thing. But I believe that God wants to do a financial miracle. If you believe in God, we just lift up a hand to the Lord right now. Believe in God for a financial miracle. My hand's up too right now. I'm believing God for some things. Let's believe God together. Father, we just welcome the miracles tonight, God. And Lord, we pray for all those with hands lifted to you, believing you for a financial miracle, God. Lord, some need a job. Some need to get healed to get a job, Lord. I ask, Father, that you would provide jobs, better jobs, God, raises and bonuses, God. Provide those benefits, those commissions, God, those sales, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you open doors of opportunity, God. Get, get people in front of the right people, Lord, and give them favor, blessing. 
Thank you, Father God, for uh, healing those who can't work because they've been disabled or, or God, they've been uh, hurt on the job or something's happened. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that right now you touch their body, God. And Lord, that you give them breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, Lord, for, for financial provision, God, that, uh, Lord, you would bring in large gifts in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, that you give wise stewardship, Lord, where, where maybe they hadn't seen it before what they can do, but that God, miraculously, right now, you just give them the wisdom and you show them the way, Father God. Lord, I thank you, Father, that some of us in this place, God, won't even know what happened, God. That the math won't work out, but God, you work it out, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father God, every bill is paid, Lord, every need is met, God, every provision is given, God. I thank you, Lord, for blessing people with cars, God. Blessing people with clothes who need them, God. Thank you, Father God. No one will miss a meal in the name of Jesus. And we just believe you right now for supernatural, miraculous provision. God, we receive freedom for our future gifts, God, in large sums, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Those of us that are believing you for that, God. Thank you, Lord. You provide in a miraculous, supernatural way in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Let's sing that again. God wants to heal the sick. If you're sick, just come to the altar right now. If you're wounded, maybe it's not sick, maybe it's pain, come to the altar. You want a miracle? anything too hard for God? If you have to get in the aisles, if it's getting too many people, you can stand in the aisle too. Those of you that are up front, just lift a hand to the Lord if you can. All right? Those of you that are out there, you're, you're feeling well in your body, reach out your faith right now and let's believe God for the miraculous. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray over those who are up here up front, God. We pray, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus that by your stripes they were healed, God. Right now, God, we would ask for the miracle working power of God to touch their bodies, God, right where they're sick right where they're wounded, Father God, right where they're hurting, Lord, right where something's not right in their body. Lord God, that you would curse cancer in their body right now. Remove it, and may it come out of them in the name of Jesus, and may the area that was affected be healed and, and, and just cover over that area and be fully restored in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you, Father God, that you move in their lives right now. God, we thank you, Lord, that tonight the pain is gone. Lord, we thank you that feeling returns in the body, Father God. We thank you that nerves are working properly, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that, that cancers, God, and, and chemical imbalances, Lord, and diabetes are gone in the name of Jesus. Tonight, Father God, we believe you, Lord, for relieving pain, God, for, for moving in these bodies, God. We thank you, Lord, that every physical hardship that's gone on in these bodies for so long, Father God, or for a short time, God, right now in the name of Jesus, we receive the miracle-working power of God, and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus. You guys can go back to your seats. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing that how high. You guys are believing God for a miracle in your marriage. Somebody's walked out. Or maybe they stayed. And you're struggling. Right where you're at. Just lift a hand to the Lord right now. If that's you. Believe in God for your marriage. Father, we pray for those who have their hands raised right now. Father, minister, miraculous healing in the hearts. Father, change the hearts towards one another. Where there's been bitterness and unforgiveness, God. Lord, may that be released to you right now in Jesus' name. And God, I pray that you miraculously from this moment on turn it around, God. You minister to the hearts what they need to do to change, God. And that they would work together to feed that miracle, God. That they would not allow it to die. They wouldn't go back to old ways, Lord. They would walk in your love and in your grace. That the fruit of the spirit of long-suffering, patience, kindness, joy, faith, temperance, meekness, would just be exemplified and above all, Lord, that they would put on love. Father, I thank you that you just bring restoration in these homes and in these marriages, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's sing that how high. pray for miraculous breakthroughs some of you felt like you've been hitting a wall and that you have not been able to move forward whatever the area is in your life you've been coming up against this thing and haven't been getting any results maybe you need to be delivered maybe it's an addiction you need to break free from maybe it's advancement maybe it's your walk with God you're just believing God for breakthrough that you need to go further with God and you just been hitting a wall maybe uh, there's a relational issue something going on on the job or on your street 
Uh, maybe it's in your family. There needs to be a, a healing and a restoration that takes place. You don't know how it's going to work. Kids have gone south. So-and-so's in prison. Something's, something's not right, and I don't know what. But you need breakthrough right now. Come on, just lift your hands to the Lord if that's you. You're saying, I need this breakthrough. I, I, I'm just believing God for a miracle. Don't know how it's going to work. Don't know what's going to happen. But I need that breakthrough. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these who have their hands raised before you, God. Lord, we are in need of breakthrough. And you are the God of all breakthrough, Lord. You are mighty. You are wonderful, God. You are awesome, Lord. There is nothing too great, nothing too strong, nothing that can stand against you, Lord. And so, Lord, we lift these walls, these burdens, these chains up to you, God. And we pray that you break through them right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Do a miracle, God, we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift up a shout of praise to the Lord tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Luke, would you help me? Okay, would you grab that microphone right there? All right, now listen. The finances, the marriage, the, the breakthroughs, all that kind of stuff. You know, you might say, I feel better, you know, and I feel like I got it. But you're not going to see the results of that maybe for a while. So I want you guys to send your testimonies to us. Email at rockchurch.com and just write your testimony. You can just entitle, title the, the, you know, regarding what miracle happened, you know, or whatever you want to put. And, and tell us your testimony because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We want to hear what happened coming out of this church service tonight. But the Bible says that when the word of God is preached, when the gospel is preached, that God confirms it by miracles, signs, wonders, and gifts of the Holy Ghost. And people, when they heard the gospel, they not only heard it, but they also saw the results of it. So here's what I want you to do. If you tonight in this place were sick in your body, okay, and maybe you couldn't do something like you couldn't lift your arm over a certain spot, but now you, you try it out and, oh my goodness, I can lift my arm. Or maybe it was your knee, you couldn't walk, you know, or something like that, but now all of a sudden you can, you can lift that leg or something. If you know that you got a healing, would you just lift your hand up? Because physically there's something different, okay? Pastor Luke, will you help me? You got the mic? Who's got the mic? Eden's got the mic. You going to help me out, Eden? Eden's my buddy. I love Eden. All right, Eden, we've got some hands over here. Will you run over here, brother? Lift your hand if you know that you got a physical healing, okay? All right. Okay, and just tell us your name and, and what was going on before. Don't give her the mic, Eden, because she's going to preach, man. You, Eden, Eden will hold the mic, okay? What's your name? Is the mic on? There's a little switch on the bottom there. If it lights up, it's on. Okay. Precious Lewis. Precious? Yes. All right. No certificate and all, I promise. Nice to meet you. What, what, was, what was going on in your body? Um, I was in a car accident, broke okay. my left wrist. And I never even knew if I was completely healed, but couldn't bend it too Could, far. Wait, can you hold that up high? Do we got the camera on her? Okay, hold it up high, camera. Can you get the wrist? There you go. Look at that. Look at that. Is that a miracle? That's a miracle. That's a miracle. Is there anything too hard for your God? No. Nope. Nothing. Who else? Who else? Someone else, do, do we have another hand? You know you've got a physical healing. That's amazing pressure. All right, way up in the back there. Eden, you see that hand up there? All right, Eden's running to you. And Lesko's got one too? Oh, you got a mic. Okay, so Lesko, I think there's somebody right behind you there. All right, so, so Eden will start over here. Okay, what's your name? My name's Lamar. Mark? Lamar. 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 Okay, I'm sorry. I'm on the other side of the speakers. I'm having a hard time hearing. But Lamar. Okay, Lamar, what, what was going on in your body? Um, I used to have this ringing in my ear, constant 24-7. Now it's gone. It's gone. Gone. Nope. You can hear. No ringing. Yep. Hallelujah. Lamar, yep. is that a miracle? That's a miracle. All right. Is there anything too hard for your God? Nope. Hallelujah. Who do we got up here, Paul? Quinn. Hello. Quinn. <laughs> Quinn, what's that? This is my friend Quinn. Quinn. I did Quinn's wedding. Yeah. Yeah, man. How you doing, Quinn? Good, good. Good. Um, what, what was going on? For the past month, I've had um, bronchitis. Bronchitis? Yeah. And I couldn't stop coughing. My nose has been plugged up. A lot of mucus and everything. And ever since I went up there, I could just feel my nose being unclogged. And I could breathe good and everything. So take a, take a big, deep breath in. 
Oh, hallelujah. Did that feel good? Quinn. Quinn, is that a miracle? It is. Is there anything too hard for your God? No. Hallelujah. Is there someone else? Someone else you know? There's something physically different. Anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, is that a hand over there? Anybody else? Anybody else? I don't see any hands going up. All right. Anyone else? This is, this is your chance. Check it out. See if there's anything different. You know, if you came in, is there someone over here? Okay. All right. Here we go. Eden's running. Eden, Eden's got you, Paul. Paul needs to get healed. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Angie. What is it? Angie. Angie? All right. Angie, what, what was going on in your body that you were sick? Or My head pain? was hurting. Head was hurting? Yes. Yeah. And, and is it hurting right now? No. Pain's gone? Yes. Angie, is that a miracle? Yes. It is. is there anything too hard for your God? No. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hey, come on, let's lift up a great big shout of praise to our miracle working God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo! Now listen, listen, some of you guys aren't healed yet. You say, well, Pastor Dan, does that mean that they was too hard for God? No, there's nothing too hard for your God. you got to feed your miracle. That means feed your faith. That means go after scriptures that deal with it. That means when the devil comes knocking and tells you you're sick and you're not healed or your marriage is busted and ain't nothing going to fix it, well, you're not going to get your breakthrough, you're still hitting the wall, finances are still dried up, when the you hear that? You say, uh-uh-uh. Wednesday night, December 3rd, I was in church and I received my miracle. It's, I don't know when. I don't know how. But I know who. His name is Jesus, the miracle worker. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. I want to talk to you guys about your life before you leave this place. I want to make sure that your heart is right with God. And that today, if you died, that you wouldn't end up in hell, but that you'd go to heaven. Sometimes people say, well, pastor, I don't believe in hell. I believe that's a, a fairy tale that parents made up to scare their children into being good. But the problem with that thinking is that the Bible talks about hell. Old and New Testament. Jesus himself spoke of hell. It's a very real place. And just by denying its existence doesn't make it go away. You're going to have to face the reality of it. I don't want you to go there. You don't want you to go there. And listen to this. God loves you so much, he doesn't want you to go there. Never intended for you and me. It was made for the devil and his angels who rebelled. So today, let's make sure that you don't go to hell, but that you go to heaven. Some of you say, well, pastor, I believe that all roads lead to heaven. You just do your thing. I'll do my thing. You know, we stay true to ourselves. Churches out there, they can do whatever they want. You know, and God sees that and appreciates that. And he's going to let us all into heaven. Just, you know, all roads lead there. That's just how it is. The problem, once again, is could you show that to me in the Bible where it says all roads lead to heaven? Because I don't, I don't find that anywhere in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible says just do whatever you want to do and you get to go to heaven. In fact, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes to the Father except by me. There's only one way you're going to get to heaven. It's just like saying all roads lead to the moon here on the earth. No, there's only one way you're going to have to get there. You can't drive around the earth. You can drive around the earth as long as you want and you're never going to make it. Same thing, you can't just do whatever you want to do or whatever I want to do or whatever some well-meaning church committee says to do and think that you're going to get to heaven. It's God's heaven, got to get there God's way. Now sometimes people say, well, pastor, that's good news. God's way into heaven is by being good. I've been a really good person my entire life. You know, I used to be bad, cleaned up my act, now I'm good. And, uh, you know, I, I believe that my good outweighs my bad now. And, and uh, you know, I'm giving money to charity, has been nice to my neighbors, help people out and got involved in social justice causes buy shoes and water that helps people around the world and, and, and I've been a really good person I, I believe that God's going to let me into heaven because I've been good now the problem with that thinking once again is could you show that to me in the Bible where you are nice to your neighbors or help people out or get involved in social justice causes where you're good outweighs your bad or how good you have to be in order to get to heaven because it's not there no one in the Bible says you can be good enough you know why because the standard is perfection the only one who is perfect his name is Jesus you're not going to make it there based on your goodness because the Bible tells us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You're not going to make it by just being good. And our goodness compared to God's goodness, that's like filthy rags, the Bible says. You're going to get thrown out. You're not going to make it to heaven just by being good. Now, sometimes people say, well, hold on a second, Pastor. I was raised in church. My parents told me you're Christians growing up. They hung a cross for St. Christopher around your neck. Had you baptized or christened as a child. Attended religious classes like Sunday school or catechism class, maybe Sabbath school class. You're born in America. America is a Christian nation. Everybody born in America is going to heaven. 
We're not any other religions. We're not Buddhists, Muslims, Hindus. Therefore, we're Christians headed for heaven, denying our presence in hell, right? Wrong. Did you know that nowhere in the Bible say your parents raise you in church, tell you you're a Christian, that makes you a Christian? Nowhere in the Bible does it say you attend religious classes, wear religious jewelry, be baptized or christened as a child that you get to go to heaven? Nowhere in the Bible does it say that because you're born in America or that because you're not some other religion, that by default, God lumps you into the category of being a Christian. You get to be headed for heaven, denying your presence in hell. Now, you might be thinking, okay, pastor, that was when I was a kid. I get that. I understand that. But here I am in church right now, and right now is what counts. And I'm here in church, and I consider myself to be a Christian. Now, while that's great, and I'm glad you're here, could you just show that to me in the Bible where you sit in church service, call yourself a Christian, that makes you a Christian? It doesn't work like that. That's like me going to my house, sitting in my garage, calling myself a car, and that makes me a car. No, I'm just a person sitting in my garage. You can't just sit in church, call yourself a Christian, that makes you a Christian. You say, Pastor, I get that. I understand that. But you don't understand my last church. I got involved. I helped out. sang in the choir. Carried the pastor's Bible. Made decisions in that church. People thought of me as a leader. Taught in the Bible classes. Even got a membership card to that church. That's great. I'm glad you did those things. Just, just show that to me in the Bible, could you? Where you help out. Carry the pastor's Bible. Make decisions. People think of you as a leader. It's not there. No one in the Bible say you teach in the Bible classes or... Because you get a membership card that God's waiting at the gates of heaven, looking for your membership card to a church before you can enter. Come on, tonight, can I love you enough and respect you enough, honor you enough to not play games and tell you the truth? That's how you think you can get to heaven. You're not going to make it. Say, but Pastor, wait a second. Someone told me that if I knew God, that makes me a Christian. I know God. I know about Jesus. Celebrate Easter and the resurrection. Sing the songs of Christmas every year of my life. I could quote scriptures to you, Pastor. Old and New Testament. Doesn't that mean that I'm a Christian? Well, if you'd read your Bible, you'd know that demons believe that Jesus Christ is Son of God. They're not Christians. If you'd read your Bible, you'll find out the devil himself knows who Jesus is and can quote scripture out of his mouth, and yet that doesn't qualify him for heaven. So everybody look up here for a second. Look up here. This is not about what you have in your head. Not about having mental ascent towards God, head knowledge about who Jesus is, and that makes you all right with God, and you get to go to heaven because of that. But rather, this is about your heart. There was a religious leader of Jesus' day by the name of Nicodemus. Good guy. Did a lot of good deeds. He was raised up in his church called the synagogue. Got involved, became one of the leaders there. Attended all the time. Uh, In fact, he became one of the teachers in Israel. If, If you wanted to find out about God, you would have gone to a guy like Nicodemus. Did a lot of great deeds. And we would have thought if anybody had it going on with God, it would have been this guy Nicodemus. And as Jesus is speaking to this great man, probably better than all of us in this room, Jesus doesn't pat him on the back and say, Nick, man, hey, you're just doing fantastic. Just keep doing what you're doing and I'll see you in heaven. No, he doesn't say it at all. Rather, what does he say? He says, Nicodemus, you want to enter the kingdom of heaven? You must be born again. Just that simple. It's all or nothing with Jesus. Let me prove it to you in the last book of the Bible, book of Revelation, Jesus is speaking to the church just like he's speaking to us here in this church tonight. And he says, when I come, I want to find you hot or I want to find you cold because if I find you lukewarm, I will vomit you from my mouth. Now, those are gross graphic words from the mouth of Jesus. But what is he saying? Lukewarm, what's that all about? Well, it's a little in, a little out, a little up, a little down, a little token prayer every now and again, an occasional church attendance. God is something in your life, but he's not everything. And you're not opposed to God, but you're not wholehearted for God. Listen, if that's your relationship with Jesus, you're not going to make it. How do I know that? Because think about it, only people that are not real Christians will be ejected and rejected from the body of Christ. So tonight I'm going to give you an opportunity. Jesus made this statement. He said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father who is in heaven. But if you deny me, I will deny you. So tonight, your call, your choice. Here's your opportunity. I'm going to count to three just like this. One, two, three. When I say three, I'm going to pop my hands together. Bang. Now when you hear the sound of my hands popping together just like that, bang. That's your opportunity to raise your hand. What you're doing by the raising of your hand is you're saying, I want to give God all my heart. I want to give God all my life. I want to be born again, headed for heaven, denying my presence in hell. I'll see your hand go up. I'll count it. You can put it right back down. Now you might be thinking, whoa, 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 wait a second. Time out. If I raise my hand, I'll be embarrassed. Uh Uh-huh. You might be. But let's push past that embarrassment tonight because think of the trade-off for a moment. Isn't it better to be embarrassed for a moment than it is to end up in hell forever and ever and ever? And that no one made that trade. And yet your flesh is trying to hold you back. Oh my goodness, what are people going to think? Devil's trying to talk you out of this right now. Listen, let's push past that. 
Because it's better to be embarrassed for a moment than it is to end up in hell forever. And guess what? You probably won't even be embarrassed. People around you, they're rooting for you. We're excited about you. We've all done this at one point or another, in one way or another in our lifetimes. Now it's your turn. Will you give God all of your heart? Will you give God all of your life? Your call, your choice. Who should raise their hand in a moment if you've been running from God instead of to God? I'm speaking to you. Who should raise their hand if you're not sure about your salvation? Come on, tonight you can make sure. Who should raise their hand if you've never done this, never said yes to Jesus, given them all of your heart and all of your life? Come on, I'm speaking to you. Or finally, who should raise their hand in this place? If you're lukewarm and you know that's the condition of your heart when I described it, you're ready to get your hand up. All across this auditorium, back in the family rooms, wherever you're at, watching my television in the foyer, the Love Rock Cafe, or online. Come on, get ready to get your hand up. And then telling us you're right afterwards or coming to the church services. Or if you're online, you can click that blue button next to your browser or go to our homepage where it says respond to God. Click that and someone will lead you in a prayer. I'm going to count to three. Pop my hands together. This is your time. This is your moment of salvation. Here we go. Get ready if you need to do this. This is your time. One, two, three. Let me see your hands. Just raise them up high for me if that's you right now. Thank you. There's one. God bless you. There's two. Thank you. There's three. There's four. God bless you. There's five. Thank you. Who else? Five wise people already. Five wise people. Thank you. Got you. Six, seven. Thank you. Anybody else real quick that I did not already see? About seven wise people. Anybody else? Anybody else? Seven wise people. I didn't embarrass them. I won't embarrass you. How many in the family room? One more. Okay, there's eight. God bless you back there in the family room. Who else? Saying, I know I need to do this. No, I need to do this. Listen, if you're, if you're sitting there thinking, Pastor, I want to do it, but I need to wait and clean up my act first. Not going to work. Not going to make it. Because you come to God, you give God your mess. He cleans you up from the inside out. That's how this works. So if you're hesitating, thinking I'm going to wait for tomorrow, listen, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're, we're all one breath away from eternity. And so I want to encourage you tonight. You've got this moment right now. Faith is high in this place. God is here. He loves you so much. He sent Jesus, beaten, bloody, and hung on a cross. Now, will you give him all of your heart? Will you give him all of your life? If that's you, you know God just spoke to you. He just read your mail. Come on, let's go for God. Don't wait another moment. Eight wise people already. Where are you at, number nine? You know, God just spoke to you. Come on, just lift it up high for me. If that's you, thank you, number nine. God bless you. Who else, number 10? Come on. Don't you just know there's number 10 sitting there? 10, you're wondering. There you are. God bless you. 10. Anybody else? All right, let's give the Lord a great big praise for 10 wise people. Hallelujah. Let's do this. Let's all stand. And if you raise your hand or you should have raised your hand, it's not too late. Once you get a hold of your coat, purse, sweater, Bible, a friend if you need a friend. Once you get in the aisle and meet me up front because we're going to change destinies today. Okay? If it was good enough to raise your hand for, come on, it's good enough to come down for. So let's all welcome them as they come. And if you raise your hand or you should have raised your hand, you come right now. Get your stuff. Get a friend if you need a friend. Get in the aisle and meet me up front. Come on down. Come on down. Hallelujah. They're coming. From the family rooms, bring your children. Come on down, they'll remember this. Make your way to the front right now. Come on, come on, come on. If that's you, you know you need to come. Just make your way to the front right now. Anybody else, if you need to come, you just make your way to the front. Come on down. They're still coming. Come on, they're still coming. You can come too. else if you need to come. Come on, just make way to the front right now. Okay, now hold on. There's not 10 people up here. So that means if you raised your hand and you didn't come forward, you're going to miss this. And I don't want you to miss this. But have them sing that again, Jesus, I believe. And as they do, if you raised your hand or you should have raised your hand, come on. Let's go for God. If you're serious about this, we're serious about you. And listen, I promise it's painless. We're not going to bite you, okay? We, we love you, and we want to get you started in the right foot with your walk with God. Let's not start that in rebellion. W would you just come if you raised your hand or if you should have raised your hand? Just right now. Come on, let's sing that. And you just make your way to the front right now. Come on down. Come on down. If that's you, you need to come. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Hallelujah, they're coming. You can come too. Anybody 
else if you need to come, you just make your way to the front right now. Come on down. All right. All right. Thank God you guys have come. Now listen, we don't often do this, but I'm going to take a special moment tonight. And I want to pray with you guys a simple prayer to invite Jesus into your heart. Listen, we talked about miracles, the greatest miracle that you'll ever see. When someone gives their heart to the Lord, they're born again. Now listen, you say, wait a second, how do I see that? It's by faith, okay? You trusted God and said, I, I need God. I need to do something. I need to, I need to change. And you're going to cross over right now from death to life, from darkness to light. You're going to be brand new on the inside, okay? So I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer to invite Jesus in your heart. You're going to be born again, all right? So let's all bow our heads and let's close our eyes in prayer, simply talking to God. So I want you to say out loud if you have the ability. Say, Father God. Everybody join with us. Say, Father God, I come to you now in the name of Jesus. And I give you all of my heart and all my life. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me of my sin. Everything I've ever done wrong. And make me brand new on the inside. Let it be known that from this day on, I am a Christian. I'm saved. I'm born again. Headed for heaven. Denying my presence in hell. Thank you, Jesus. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big praise. Hallelujah. All right. Now listen. We want to help you in your walk with God. So right over here to my right, your left, waving at you. This is Pastor Joel. Pastor Joel wants to give you some free stuff, okay? And he wants to talk to you about a program we have here. Again, free, called Spiritual Personal Trainers. It's a friend in church who will help you get strong in the ways of the Lord. Now listen, 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 listen. Let me make a promise to you guys. Give us one year of your life here at the Rock Church World Outreach Center, sitting consistently under the teaching of God. If you can get in once a week on Wednesday night, Come on, all right? One year, once a week, Wednesday night. If you can get in Sunday morning or Sunday night or Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night or Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, Thursday morning. or we, Listen, we have 11 church services a week. So if you can make one or two or three, come on. Let's go for God one year consistently. At the end of that year and for the rest of your life, you'll be saying, I'm so blessed. I didn't know it could be like this. Now, remember that testimony I talked to you guys about? The lady tried to kill herself, ended up getting saved at Easter, came here, and her, her life's been changed. She said, I've only given God seven months, and my life is radically changed, and I, it's already happened in my life. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Okay? It all starts with the information he's going to give you in the program, Spiritual Personal Trainers. So if you guys would make a left turn and follow Pastor Joel, let's give him a hand as they go. Hallelujah. Hey, you just heard that altar call. You just wanted to give God all of your heart and all of your life. Now let me lead you simply in a prayer of inviting Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and listen to me and go ahead and close your eyes and just repeat these words after me. I'll go slow. You repeat them. Say these words. Say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son and that you sent him for me and that he died for me on that cross at Calvary. I believe that his blood washes away my sins, that I am now a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. I receive you now and forever as my Lord and as my Savior. I'm going to turn from sin, and I'm going to turn with all of my heart and all of my life to you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Let it be known in heaven as well as upon the earth that I am born again. I'm a child of God, that I'm saved, and I'm headed for heaven and denying my presence in hell. Thank you, Jesus. I'm alive forevermore. Love you so much. God bless you guys. Everybody just say amen and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. So talk to you later. God bless you. Thank you for listening to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. If this message spoke to you, please share it with us. We'd love to hear from you. You can find more information at www.rockchurch.com.